This is an offline recording of our JCDL 2013 short paper entitled Multimodal Alignment of Scholarly Documents and Their Presentations. I'm Minyan Tan, and this is joint work with my master's student, Bamdad Barani, and we are from the National University of Singapore. So by scholarly papers and scholarly documents, we mean, for example, journal articles and conference papers. In fact, as professors, graduate students, and undergraduates, we read lots and lots of papers to make sure we're at the state of the art of progress so that we can make innovations for reporting in scientific venues like JCDL. So one question that we always ask ourselves is how do we make sense of all of this knowledge that uh, we encounter? Do we just read the proceedings of the conferences if um, we come across articles that are useful? Of course, that's not always true, right? I mean, after all, when we have conferences in the computer science community, we often make much effort to attend them. And this is because we can be in the same place to learn from each other. And part of that is uh, conferences that make slide presentations like JCDL, of which I'm doing an offline recording, right? The slide presentation that I'm doing now is often a way of summarizing a paper, which makes it more accessible and easy to digest for someone coming to this work new. The problem with such slide presentations is they often are just the tip of the iceberg. They're sort of like an abstract. They give a teaser to what's in the work, but miss out important technical details. So a clear way where we can win is to meld both of these artifacts together. That is the slide presentation as well as the document, the technical document. Hence our idea of being able to align papers to their presentation. We want to juxtapose both media together in some type of fine-grained manner, where I might take certain slides from a presentation and locally align them to parts of the document. For example, these two slides in this presentation actually refer to the evaluation section of this document. So the output of the input uh, where we take a presentation as well as a paper is some type of alignment map where we describe which slides correspond to which sections of the paper. So a paper we can visualize as containing M subsections or sub subsections and a presentation as containing a certain amount, say N, slides. This is a slide-centric alignment that we're trying to generate. Okay, so it's not symmetric. Each slide is aligned to one of two things, either a section of a paper or it should be not aligned at all. Okay, termed nil alignment for this presentation. So I've covered the motivation and problem statement. Now I'm going to cover our baseline analysis on existing data set. So actually, there has been some related work in this area. Okay, Hayama et al. in 2005 uh, probably created the first known system to do this type of fine-grained slide alignment. They looked at a text similarity metric to align slides to sections of a paper. A frame in 2006, who was an undergraduate student in my group, also examined this and used the fact that monotonic alignment or uh, linear ordering might be helpful. Our own work in 2007 also suggested that NILS identification, which was suggested in previous papers, might be important to do. This is the case where slides don't or shouldn't align to anything. In this work, it was first used and realized. And later in 2009, in the natural language community, another team from Beamer and Yuju also tackled this problem using text similarity only. So our work is a little bit different. We considered the last row as a way of improving on the current state of the art, which is that the visual contents of the slide or the paper could also help in doing the alignment. 
Hence, we call our method a multimodal alignment system. So we start with a baseline that's publicly available. This is Efrain's paper from 2006, where he compiled 20 presentation and paper pairs. These were papers in PDF, where the sources were found from DBLP, and they were cut into sections and subsections as spans of text. On the other hand, for the other side of the media, we had presentations that were in PowerPoint format that were verified to have been constructed by the same author as those of the paper. And these were, of course, slides from the conference presentations. So some data set analysis shows us we have about 515 sections in these 20 presentation pairs and uh, about 750 slides. That makes the average number of sections per paper about 25 and the average number of slides about 37. These are figures that we'll refer to a little bit later, this average number of sections and slides. So when we look at this uh, 20 slide data set, slide pair data set, what we find are in fact that the majority of the slides are compiled of text, but there are a substantial amount of slides that aren't actually fully text. For example, slides like the ending thank you or agenda consists of slides that shouldn't be aligned or nils as well as outline slides. Image slides, ones that are mostly images that don't have much text, also consist of a fair a large amount of slides in presentations in this data set, amounting to about 12%. Drawing slides will contain, uh, contain a lot of graphical elements as well as small text boxes comprised of 9% and a very few amount of slides in our particular dataset contain ta tabular information. When we run a baseline error analysis where we just use textual similarity, we can analyze the types of mistakes the baseline system makes. In fact, what we see is that the baseline has a big problem with nil slides and drawing slides because nil slides have very little text as same with drawing slides, so textual baselines do not work very well. Image slides are also a very big problem here because they also contain very little text that's available for alignment. So many of these image slides, in fact, are uh, incorrectly aligned 80% of the time, and about 70% of those errors belong to slides which talk about evaluation or results. Okay, to review, monotonic alignment is something that tells, suggests that slides and sections of a paper are usually linearly um, align. In other words, they proceed uh, monotonically increasing. So if you start from the upper left of this slide, okay, this is the first slide and the first section, and going towards the diagonal bottom is the last section and the last slide. And all of the black boxes here indicate with their intensity where the slides are usually aligned. And you can see they roughly are on this diagonal, which suggests that the order of the presentation and the order of the slides are monotonic. Okay? This is uh, compiled by using the average number of sections and the average number of slides that was featured in the data set. So these results was not in the original paper. So this is new for the presentation. We have some evidence that we use for the alignment. We've already seen in our baseline analysis that text similarity does a good job, but fails for specific types of slides that have very little text. We can also use linear ordering, which is what we just reviewed in our monotonic alignment. And finally, we think that visual content can be very helpful because it can be used to, to align things that don't have textual evidence. 
So the way we do it in this work is a heuristic system. We represent each of these three sources of information as some type of probability distribution or preference. And we try to handle obvious exceptions using heuristic methods. We weight the final distributions together to find out the most likely point and use that as the alignment. Here's a system architecture that I'm going to refer to in the subsequent slides. Basically what we do is we take the input presentation and document and then send the input presentation to a slide image classifier which is the rounded box that you see in the middle here. The textual information from the document is sent into a text alignment algorithm and the linear ordering preference is also enforced. We put all of these pieces of information into a fusion operation to output the final alignment map. We'll discuss each of these parts in the following slides very briefly. The first part is the slide image classifier, which is what is new for this work. Basically what we do is we take each slide, we take a ping snapshot of that slide and send it into an image classifier. This image classifier is to output one of four different classes, text, outline, drawing, and results. These classes are slightly different from the earlier alignment analysis. For textual sides, we're looking for things like this, where there's a large um, horizontal baseline and many uh, disconnected components. In the outline slide, we're looking for very few elements of texts that are centered on the slide. In the drawing slide, we're looking for graphical elements and small text boxes. And in the results slide, we are looking for vertical and horizontal lines and filled shapes that might indicate, for example, a table or a chart. We use a single feature class called a histogram of oriented gradients, or HOG, which is a well-known set of features that is used in computer vision. We use a different set of 750 manually annotated slides that are different from the data set that we discussed earlier to train and test our classifier using tenfold cross-validation. Our results are here. As we can show, using this single feature class, we can get an F measure of about 0.9, meaning that one out of every 10 slides may fall into the wrong category. We think this represents a fairly useful result because the classifier is largely accurate. In the multimodal fusion stage, we take the slide image classifier information, which is deferred input, and also include the text alignment vector and the ordering alignment vector, which is our monotonic preferences, as input. We take these three weights, WTS, WOS, and WNU, and sum them to 1. These weights are going to be used for deciding which type of slide and where it should be aligned. Note that the W nil at the end is not the image evidence. It's the weight that's assigned to favor nil classifications, that is, whether a slide should not be aligned to anything. We tune these weights according to their image classes as follows. So the initial distribution of these free weights is set uniformly to one-third. When we know that a slide is actually text, for example, like this one here, we upweight the weight of the text alignment system, that is, the alignment based on the similarity of the text spans. And we reduce the similarity 
sorry, we reduce the weight of the node classifier accordingly. When we think it is an outline slide, such as something like this, we subtract weights from both the text and the monotonic alignment and favor no alignment in this case. For drawing results, such as this, we leave the weights initially as uniform. And for results, which as you may recall, usually signal experimental results, we ignore all the weights and unilaterally align it to a experiment and results section. There are some exceptions to this, uh, additionally, which is the no classifier. We use a heuristic to discard any slides which we think should not be aligned. When the text similarity is very small and the word count is very small, we have a large factor for the weight of a nil. The final alignment uh, vector is used when neither of those two sections apply. And as, in other words, the slide was not a result slide and it was not classified as nil. Then we use the section N that is aligned to the text and the monotonic ordering as below. We have a couple experiments to report. First, in our text only paragraph to slide alignment, we are doing this for comparative evaluation against the previous state of the art. To further the state of the art, we look at three additional questions. For our first experiment, we look at the slide seer system in 2007 and the beamer system in 2009. We can see just using the simple baseline of text alone, we do better than both systems with respect to accuracy. When we add, when we change the problem to do alignment at the section level rather than at the paragraph level, there is a noticeable bump up to 60% accuracy. But this is just because the granularity of the experiments has changed. When we add in ordering information and image classification, we get further improvements. Our accuracy comes up to about 75%. So you can see by adding in the image classification, we improve over just using the section information alone by over 16% which is substantially and significantly important. When we look at specific types of slides, we can see how good the improvements are. Okay, for nil slides, what you see on the left-hand column, you can see the baseline system gets most of these inaccurate. 83 out of the 129, 28 cases are incorrectly classified. With our multimodal system, we get about half of the errors corrected. And you can see similar things for the different types of slides that we are targeting. Outline slides also improve, image slides improve a lot, and uh, drawing slides also improve a little bit. In summary, more than 40% of slides that we found in data sets that we examined contain elements other than text. A baseline analysis using just textual similarity uh, achieves 13% incorrect alignments on text slides, but much worse than that, double on incorrect alignment on other types of slides. We use visual content to classify the slides and use this information to heuristically weight what types of slides and they are and to modify the alignment algorithm. Based on our final system, which is S4, we can lower the incorrect alignment for all types of slides, but most noticeably for other slides that don't contain a lot of text, reducing error by 50%.
In conclusion, many slides with images and drawings that have text don't have enough text to make it obvious where the alignment should be. As such, we need to incorporate visual elements to drive the alignment, as both evidence in terms of our image classification and as a way for architecting our alignment system as a multimodal fusion system. Thank you very much for listening.